Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to see the Firebase local emulator in action. We're going to take a Angular application that does not use the emulator yet and we're going to set it up to use the local emulator instead of connecting to a cloud Firestore database for local development. It's going to be much more convenient to do all our development locally using the emulator. So the first thing that we're going to do is here in our environment.ts file containing the environment configuration that allows us, for example, to connect to our cloud database, we're going to add here an extra flag. We're going to call it use emulators and we're going to set it to true for our local development environment. So if by some reason, while we are developing locally, we want to connect to our cloud database, then we simply have to set this flag to false. Otherwise, this is going to be true. And by default, our development environment locally is going to connect to the emulator. Now, all we have to do is to detect the presence of this flag at application startup time and depending on its value, activate or not the emulator. We are going to be doing that here in our application root module. If we scroll down here to the bottom of the file, you're going to notice that you have here some configuration that is commented out here on the providers property. So this is configuration for the dependency injection system. This is what is going to activate or not the emulator. Let's uncomment this configuration and let's review it together. So what we have here are three providers, one for the emulator of the Firebase authentication module, one emulator for the Firestore database itself, and one emulator for Firebase Cloud Functions. So the Firestore emulator is going to give us a running local version of the Firestore database to which we can easily upload test data. The authentication emulator is going to allow us to have predefined test users that are well connected to the Firebase database with different roles such as for example an administrator, a normal user, etc. Meaning that we won't have to create these users each time that we need to test those different types of user roles. And finally, the functions emulator is going to allow us to run Firebase Cloud Functions locally. This will avoid us having to deploy to the cloud a cloud function in order to test it. As we can see, there is not a single Firebase emulator. We actually have multiple different emulators running. So we can see here in our Firebase.json that the emulators configuration has a port for each of the emulators. You want to make sure that the port that you have chosen here matches the port that we are declaring here on our provider configuration. So for each emulator, we have here a provider with a given injection key and here as the value of this injectable, we are going to be providing one of two things. If the use emulators property is set to true, meaning that the emulator should be active, we are going to be specifying here where the emulator is running. So we are going to be running this emulator, for example, on localhost, and this is the port that needs to match the port that you have chosen here when you have set up your firebase.json. This value here, for example, in the authenticator emulator needs to match what we have here on the configuration of the authentication emulator in our Angular application and the same thing for the other two emulators. If the use emulators property is set to false, then this injectable is going to be undefined and this is going to signal to the Angular Fire module that the emulator should not be turned on and that instead we should connect to a real cloud database using these properties here. So with this, we now have set up here all our emulators that we're going to be using throughout the course in one go. We are going to be using straight away the Firestore emulator that allows us to run a Firestore database locally with its own local security rules. And we are going to be using the other two emulators later on in the course when we cover in detail Firebase authentication and cloud functions. 
Right now, let's see the Firestore emulator in action. To turn on the Firestore emulator, we're going to head over to a terminal. So on our first terminal, we're going to be running our Angular application using the Angular Live development server. And here on the second terminal, we're going to run the emulator with the command Firebase emulators colon start. And then you want to make sure that you add this only Firestore. Otherwise, if you start all the emulators, you're going to start the authentication emulator, the functions emulator, and the problem is that the functions emulator is not yet ready to be used. So you would get an error. It's essential that you run this command at this point in the course. Once you run this command, you are going to get here this success message saying that all emulators are ready. So now we can connect our application and we can even view the emulator user interface here on this port localhost 4000. Let's have a look at this emulator user interface. We're going to switch here to a larger window where we have localhost 4000 running. So as we can see, this is the user interface for the local emulator. We can see here the warning. Remember that this is a local environment. So this means that this is running here on our computer, not in the cloud. Let's go ahead and let's dismiss this warning. And let's have a look at the Firestore tab containing the Firestore emulator. So as we can see, this is a Firestore database, which is currently empty. This is very similar to our production database, but this is instead running locally in our development machine. To confirm that our Angular application is indeed connected to this empty database, let's go ahead and let's run our application here in a second tab and let's access here the home screen. So as we can see, we get here an empty list of courses instead of the list of courses that we got from our cloud database instance. So this confirms that our application is running here against our empty emulated database we can now start to use this development console in order to populate our database. For example, let's create here a courses collection and let's add a course inside it. Let's add here a description field, for example, and let's say that this is the Firebase course. Let's go ahead and hit save. And this is going to create here a document in our development database. Let's use the console to add here another field. Let's add, for example, the field categories. Let's make this an array and let's add here an element to the array. Let's say that this is the beginner category. Let's go ahead and hit save. And now let's add here one last field in order to make this a valid course document. Let's add the sequential number. Let's make this a number, set it to one. And now we have here a valid course document. So now if we switch back to our user interface and we access here the home screen, we are going to see that our test data is now getting displayed here in our application. Notice that the emulator data is going to disappear once we stop the emulator. So this data only exists in memory in our development machine for the moment. So if we switch back here to our application and in the terminal we stop our emulator with Control C, we are going to see that after the emulator has stopped, if we start it again using the exact same command, Firebase emulators start minus minus only Firestore, we are going to see that after the emulator starts up again, if we switch back here to the emulator user interface, we are going to see that our database is empty once again. So the emulator data always get reset across emulator restarts, which is great if we want to start from a fresh starting point. Now, what we usually don't want to do is to start from an empty database each time. Instead, what we want to do is to start our emulator and have here already some clean data ready to be used for development purposes. We can then modify the data during a development session, stop the emulator, start it again, and have again a clean starting point with valid data that supports many development use cases. So what you can do once you populate your database with some data is to export it and then import it the next time that you start the emulator. So let's say that we have added here some data and now we want to export it for later use. So how do we export emulator data? 
we're going to go back here to our development environment and very important without stopping the emulator because remember if you stop the emulator you are going to lose all the data in memory so without stopping the emulator you are going to open another terminal and from here we can run the following command firebase emulators colon export and now all we have to do is to give a name to the data set for example we could give the name sample courses once we hit enter this is going to create some xml files locally containing all the data in the database that later on we can easily apply at emulator startup time whenever we run the command emulators start and then we simply have to add minus minus import and the name of the data set that we want to import and with this our emulator would be started with this data that we have exported so we already have some data that you can use here in our application that is already exported and ready to be used and it's available here under the import data folder so we're going to see that we have here a folder available containing some test data so let's go ahead and see what this data looks like we are going to close the emulator let's go ahead and let's switch here to the emulator tab let's shut it down and now we are going to start the emulator by running the following command firebase emulators start then we want to start only the firestore emulator so this is very important let's make sure that we add this only clause and now we want to use the option minus minus import and then the name of the data set that we want to import in our case it's test dash data and this is going to start the emulator and import the test data now once the emulator is up and running we are going to switch again to the emulator ui and you are going to see that this time around you already have here a ton of data you have users you have courses you have lessons so all of this is valid data that is ready to be used for your development session let's have a look at what this data looks like so if we open here our application and we head over here to the home screen we are going to see that we have here a list of courses as expected so as we can see it's very convenient to do our development using the emulator because if we modify the data for example with CRUD operations such as deleting courses creating new courses modifying existing courses we might accidentally corrupt the data during development this is very frequent so what we want to do is at any time if the data that we have in memory is no longer valid then we can stop the emulator and start it again and import all our data again this way we can ensure that we always have clean development data and a clean starting point to each of our development tasks now before we go on with the course we're going to take a moment to create here an npm script command for this instruction here so this is the command that we use to start our development environment we're going to start the emulator for the moment only the firestore emulator and we're going to import the test data this is a long command to type each time so we are going to head over here to our package.json and we're going to create here a new npm script we are going to call it local dev and we're going to paste in here this command this way the next time that we want to start our local development environment instead of having to type this complete command we only have to type npm run local dash dev and this is going to start the emulator and import the data now before we go on with the course we're going to take a moment to create here an npm script command for this instruction here so this is the command that we use to start our development environment we're going to start the emulator for the moment only the firestore emulator and we're going to import the test data this is a long command to type each time so we are going to head over here to our package.json and we're going to create here a new npm script we are going to call it local dev and we're going to paste in here this command this way the next time that we want to start our local development environment instead of having to type this complete command we only have to type npm run local dash dev and this is going to start the emulator and import the data 
And with this, we now have our development environment up and running and throughout the rest of the course for demonstration purposes. And because I believe that it's very convenient, we're going to be using the Firebase emulator. But remember, if by some reason you don't like the emulator, you can always switch this flag to false and you don't have to use it if you don't want to. You can continue taking the rest of the course using your Cloud Firestore instance if you prefer. Now that we have the emulator up and running, let's then continue with the rest of the course. We're going to be providing a full CRUD example here for the course entity. And we are also going to be implementing on the next lesson, the view course screen.